Hi, and welcome to Dear SQL DBA, a podcast and YouTube show for database administrators and developers. I'm Kendra Little from littlekendra.com and from Redgate Software. This episode is called The Manager's Guide to Git Training for Database Administrators. And this is related to the work that I've been doing at Redgate. I've been at Redgate for almost two years now. It doesn't actually feel like it's been nearly that long, but I've learned a ton and I've worked with loads of people. And one of the things that I've found is that it can be really daunting for folks who've worked with databases, perhaps for quite a long time, it can be really daunting for them to learn a version control system. And usually these days, the ver version control system that they're thinking of learning is Git, because Git is used by most people these days. It's really taken over the VCS game. It is very predominant in the field. And if people aren't already using it for existing projects, a lot of them are thinking about using it for new projects. It is really worthwhile, no matter what tooling you use, I do think it's hugely worthwhile to get your databases into version control, right? No matter what you're doing, no matter what you're doing it with, do treat your databases like real code. And this is really useful for a variety of reasons. I mean, first of all, you wanna know, hey, when did we change that? Where did the change come from? You also wanna do things like be able to test changes. So just knowing how is the schema evolving? What is the schema historically? Being able to track the lineage of changes is super useful. But even beyond that, version control systems, they provide you know, the foundation for a lot of collaboration. So one of the, the things that's really useful is to be able to review code changes early, well before you know they arrive in production, and being able to be you know fluent with a version control system, or even just familiar with a fluent version control system, knowing how to work with it. There are lots of ways that you can review code early, and the more familiar you are with a VCS, of course. This is assuming your database code is in a VCS, but the more familiar you are with that, the more the DBAs can suggest, hey, we'd like to look at it at this point. Or building upon that, the DBAs can also help identify, hey, I think we can programmatically identify these are the changes that we should review and, and these are the ones we can ignore at this point too. So being able to not only have your code in a VCS, but having not just developers, but also the DBAs know how to do this gives you lots of ways the teams can work together and ways the DBAs can add value. But the issue is that a lot of database teams when they're getting started, it can feel kind of overwhelming. And I think, especially if you've been working with databases for a while, and if you're in a more senior role, it can be a little humilifying, is that a word? <laughs> I don't mean humiliating, but you know, take learning a a new technology that you aren't very familiar with and being a beginner at that when you're a more senior person on the team, right? That can be a little tough or a little uncomfortable for some of us. It's not necessarily always our favorite thing to do. And also there's just the issue of often database teams if they haven't already been using a version control system, specifically if they're gonna use Git and they haven't already been using Git, they may not know how to kind of scope, okay, what should we learn? What should we take on? What are the essentials that we really need to know? So scoping the training is a big deal. So I'm gonna give some tips on, okay, if you haven't been using Git and you're gonna start, here's the essentials and what I think you need to know in order to kind of scope out what are we gonna learn? How are we gonna use this, right? So we're going super big picture here. The first point is that branching and merging are essential things that you want to learn with Git. If you are going to use Git as your version control system, don't say, oh, no, 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 we don't need to learn how to create new branches until later. Don't, don't fall into that trap. 
I do see teams falling into this trap. This pitfall, I guess it is, this particularly happens when a database team is really responsible for getting the code into version control and they ha- they aren't working closely with developers who've, or they aren't working closely with anyone who's been using Git for a while, right? So they're having to learn it and they're the ones responsible to get the code into source control. So in this situation, you don't really know what you don't know. And in this case, it can seem simpler to people to say, okay, we're going to get everyone using this. We're going to learn how to install it. We're going to learn push. We're going to learn pull. But but we don't want it to be complicated. We want it to be simple. And there's this idea that it is simpler to not learn how to create new branches and work in those branches and regularly merge them back. And I can see why it would seem that way. But that goes against the way Git is designed to work. Now, this may also happen because with version control systems of the past, maybe really older ones that are really painful, that uh, like uh, what's VSS, uh, the old, the oldest Microsoft version control, whose name I've actually put out of my mind. With other older version control systems, branching was more painful, and it would just create you know, huge copies of files and branches would take up a lot of space and there could be all problems with it. Git is optimized for branching. Git encourages workflows. This is from the documentation on on Git. It's called Branching in a Nutshell, the article this is from. It says, Git encourages workflows that branch and merge often, even multiple times a day. With Git, branches are designed to be really lightweight and make it really easy to branch and merge. And this is kind of uh, the way it wants you to work. In other words, if you decide, well, we're just going to use existing shared branches so that people don't have to create branches. They can just work in these existing shared branches. If you do that, you'll run into these situations where if I let's say I'm working in this shared branch with someone else. It really doesn't matter what the branch is called, right? But I am working and I'm making changes. And in the morning, I pull down the latest changes from that branch. Okay, I've got the latest changes. And I make some changes. Then I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to commit my changes. So I commit my stuff. Now I'm ready to push. I can get into a situation where I go to push my changes, but gets like, oh, oh, oh. You can't push that because some of the files you changed someone else changed those upstream of use because maybe my colleague Kathy happened to make a change to one of those files. After I pulled stuff earlier today, she made a change, she committed it, and she pushed it to the repo, right? So Git will be like, ooh, 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 no, 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 no. You've got a conflict. You can't pull those changes down and you can't push your changes up. Uh, There are ways to unstick yourself. You're not lost forever if you end up in this situation. But you see what I mean? It's not simple. Workflows in Git, the the way that is more natural to work in Git that ends up being a simpler workflow is if when I'm going to make changes, I do pull down from any shared branch, right? I do still want to pull. But I create a branch for myself, a temporary workspace that's just for me to work in. And I regularly pull from the repo's main branches, whatever the shared branches are, depending on my structure, and I regularly merge those into my branch to keep myself up to date. It's much less awkward with Git to merge into my branch on a regular basis than it is to try to be in this shared branch where we're all trying to push and pull together, right? Because the work it's a simpler workflow. So this first big piece of advice is if you're new to this, don't, like, yes, you do want to learn push. You do want to learn pull. You do want to learn commit, but you also want to learn branch and merge. So don't scope those out. And and I think they're fun to use. I don't think it ends up being as hard as I thought it would be before I learned them. Um, So don't be afraid of branching and merging. Do include them in your project scope. That's tip number one. Tip number two, Don't be afraid of the command line with Git, but do also consider using simple graphical tools. 
And there's good free ones available now. You don't have to, if you want to get a paid for tool that you're comfortable with, or maybe you've used it with other things, maybe you just like it, that's totally fine. But there's actually really good free tools with Git. I quite like the Git command line interface, the CLI. I am not one of those folks who always uses command lines for everything. I am not <laughs> saying that I like the Git CLI because I'm super nerdy. I mean, I am super nerdy, but like not in that way. <laughs> it's actually quite friendly to use. So that one of the things I like about the Git CLI is like if I mistype a command, like and I'm off by like a letter or two, like if I type branch instead of branch, it'll be like, did you mean git branch? <laughs> and if I if I try to push up to the repo and I'm on a branch that only, you know, I created the branch locally, but I haven't created the branch in the upstream repo and I push, it'll be like, oh, that branch doesn't exist in the upstream repo. If you'd like to create it with the same name that you've got in your local, here's the exact code to run, right? So I don't have to, rem the command line, I think, is very cleverly designed in Git because I don't have to remember everything. I only have to remember basic commands that I have on a cheat sheet. And I do, in the show notes for this, I have a cheat sheet I've created that I can link you to. If you search for Git cheat sheet, you'll also find basic cheat sheets that lots of folks have created. And these will help you get the essential commands down. I do think that I don't only use the command line though, right? So I, I like the command line, I'm comfortable with it, but you don't have to start with that, just don't be afraid of it. I really like the free graphic tools built into the free VS code. You can use these with all sorts of Git variants. If you're using GitHub, if you're using Git in Azure DevOps repos, whatever flavor you are, this simple free client will help with you help you with it rather. And part of why I like the client is that it doesn't, it's not too complicated. It doesn't do everything. It does a lot of the stuff that you want to do most of the time. Creating a branch, using a branch, staging your changes, which is uh, adding your changes and then committing your changes, pushing and pulling. It's very good for that. The same client, that's in VS Code is also in Azure Data Studio. So if you haven't used Microsoft's Azure Data Studio yet, this is a free tool that's built on the foundation of VS Code. So it looks a lot like VS Code. It acts a lot like VS Code underneath its VS Code, but it has extra functionality for databases and some cool extra features. It has the same Git client in it. So I like to use that client and, and I often work with Redgate tools. So the Redgate tools will have some, they have some version control functionality built into them. If I'm using them, say in SSMS, I can use, you know, commit functions and things like that within the Redgate tool. But then if I do have something like a merge conflict, I can use VS Code's conflict resolution tooling to handle that merge conflict. And it's really, really easy to switch between them. So I like the, client in VS Code or Azure Data Studio. I think it's really great to start with. And since lots of folks use VS Code or Azure Data Studio for other reasons as well, I think it, it's a great place to, if you're going to learn, say, hey, let's, let's as a team start out with this GUI. My third tip is to, if your team is going to learn Git, your database team is going to learn Git, appoint someone as the coach. Find someone who has the time and inclination to be the team's coach for learning source control. And they don't necessarily have to already be somebody who's really good at Git. They just have to be willing and have the time to stay a step or two ahead of everyone else and to get help from the team right? Because their job as the coach is really just to help encourage the project and keep the project on track. The coach might want to do things like think about, okay, how, what do we want to use to learn this? Are we going to follow a tutorial online? There are free tutorials online. Or am, does the coach, if they already know more about Get, they might want to set up, oh, here's 
I think the the various ways we should approach this, we should work through this as an exercise, right? The coach, the this is this is I think coaching is really useful in a lot of different situations. So if someone's interested in becoming a coach, this even is a small, relatively small project. So if you're a first time coach, I think this is a good one. You wanna schedule some sessions over time to keep people practicing. Because the key to learning Git, it, it really, it isn't about mentally gaining. Like it's not like learning to do trigonometry, right? It's not like that. It's really about practice and doing something repeatedly over the course of a few weeks until it becomes normal and it kind of sinks in. You know, there's, you just, you get used to it. And, and once you're used to it, you know your basic commands and you have enough skills to say, oh, when I run into something unfamiliar, I know now how to figure out how to do that, right? It's very much like that. So the coach, really, there's an element of project management to this, of setting out a timeline and helping keep people involved. And also the coach's job is to check in with teammates, ask how they're doing, find out if anything's blocking with them, and and just help them problem solve. Do they just not have enough time to keep at it? Are they running into some weird error? Just helping make sure that people are able to stick to this and really uh, guiding people along. And maybe that isn't answering the question themselves. Maybe it's finding someone else who can answer the question, but figuring out, you know, how do we actually help keep people doing this? Because if you don't have one person really tasked with keeping the group on track, something will always come up. Because database administrators, right, they're very busy and they often have emergencies and reactive work to get to. So you really want this to be someone's project to lead and to coach the team along. I think it's it's very much worth doing this though because I have really found that the more that I use version control well it's fun, right? It it not only is it fun, but it also helps me keep track of things I'm doing in ways that are very helpful. I don't lose scripts nearly as often as I used to anymore. I have ways to organize and share my work now that I didn't have before. I also have ideas about how to build on top of that and how to automate things and how to make things better that I didn't have before because I have that foundation for using version control to share my code. So I use this for all sorts of things now. I use it for code that defines schema in a database in, you know, when I'm developing database code. But I also use this for uh, scripts that I'm using for my training classes to share with people or um, scripts that demonstrate a uh, problem that I want to uh, share with the team and say, hey, can we do something better around this? All sorts of examples and, and things like that. And even more and more of my community materials that I build in my spare time, I really think about putting it in source control first because it's it's really the best way to share in many cases, to document and um, to keep things on track. So I really, really think this is a tool that all database administrators uh, should learn and should embrace. Thanks for joining me for this session of Dear SQL DBA. I'm Kendra Little, and I'll be back in another podcast episode soon. Bye, folks.